Hey everybody, welcome to Garden Time with Belle. If you're new to my channel, I am coming to you from mid-Missouri. I garden in a zone 6B. And the purpose of my channel is really just to share some of my gardening adventures with those of you who are interested in gardening. Maybe you're brand new to gardening and you're trying to learn a few things uh, or your experience. Lots of you might have more experience than I do in the garden. But the purpose of my channel was really just about sharing my passion for gardening. I happen to be a master gardener in the state of Missouri, but just because I've done that work and I volunteer in the community and support the master gardening groups, I have a lot to learn as well. And so I invite you to come along and enjoy some of my adventures in my garden and also in my new greenhouse. So today's video is all about nasturtiums. Say that three times fast, that's a mouthful. So uh, I don't know how many of you know about nasturtiums, but they are an amazing, beautiful flower. They are an edible flower. I've grown nasturtiums in the garden for several years, but this year I am focusing my attention on learning to start them from seed indoors or in my greenhouse, and then using them for a couple of purposes. As some of you may know, nasturtiums are amazing edible flowers. They are delicious. They have a little peppery kick to them. And um, so because I love cooking and entertaining just about as much as I do gardening, I use these beautiful flowers uh, as I host parties and dinners and uh, meals for my friends and family. And so that's one of my great loves for these. Not only are they beautiful in the garden and they're edible, um, but truth be told, I have learned that they are excellent host plants for aphids. So check that out. T take a look at that um, online and learn about how nasturtiums provide a tasty treat or snack for aphids. So if you find that you have an aphid problem, whether it's in your greenhouse or in your garden outside, plant some nasturtiums and those aphids will hopefully um, land on these and enjoy these and not your other types of plants that you're trying to grow. So, so the Johnny seeds that I use for today's project, um, the nasturtium, the regular Alaska mix, they get to be about 10 to 12 inches tall. So they're sort of a more upright with a little bit of cascading. But the other variety from Johnny's I'm growing is the trailing variety. So they go up and over and down, they trail. And so I was hoping um, that that would happen and that would be kind of neat to to grow that variety as well. So these are the two varieties that you'll see in the video that I'm trying to start from seed and that you'll also see me actually transplant them from their seed trays because they got to be, oh, I don't know, about three or four inches and I actually transplanted them into a couple of pots in my greenhouse as well as one of my raised beds in my greenhouse. But eventually, I will be planting a couple of other varieties closer to spring, and these are from Baker Creek. There is an Alaska Red series, all red, which will be cool to see, and I thought these looked beautiful. So this, uh, this variety is Orchid Flame, and as you can see, maybe, I don't know how well you can see the packet, but they are a gorgeous yellow with red at edges to the petals as well as a few, uh, kind of looks like an orangish red throat. So I thought these were beautiful. So I'm gonna give these a go, but these are gonna be uh, on hold until probably, I won't probably start sowing them until, I have to look at my seed calendar, seed starting calendar, but probably I'll start sowing these. Um, gosh, let me see what the package says. Start indoors four to eight weeks before the last frost. So one to two months before the last frost. And where I live, the last frost is average is around April the 18th. So I'll need to get these started probably early March. So what I'm going to need to be able to sow my nesture some seeds, as you can see in my little uh, 
garden tray, my green tray. I've got the Grow Easy self-watering tray that I'm going to use. I've got a 12 cell this time because I'm going to grow uh, six of the trailing variety and six of the Alaska mix variety. And I've got my nest or some seeds in those little glass um, bowls. I actually soak those for about six hours and I'll explain why in just a minute, but they are the kinds of seeds that have a really tough outer coating and I have good luck soaking my seeds. It helps with germination. The other thing I did is I took each seed before I soaked it and I nicked it with a sharp paring knife. Again, it helps open up that hard outer coating on these specific kinds of seeds and it helps them to more quickly germinate. At least that's my experience. So I was just gonna share with you how I prepared the seeds. You can also see that I've got my garden markers for each variety so I can tell them apart and I'll be putting those into the seed trays once I plant uh, the seeds in the seed starting mix. So as I mentioned, those seeds are really uh, tough. They have a big thick outer coating and I want to just show you a, a little close up in my hand. So these are nasturtium seeds right here that have not been soaked. You see they're kind of, oh I don't know, hard and really thick. And let me show you what it looks like after, I'll come around the other way, haha, after I soak them. So they plump up a little bit and uh, Hopefully, this trailing variety will germinate quicker because I've taken the step to soak them for about six hours before planting. So, of course, it's always important to start with good quality seed starting mix. And I use Espoma seed starting mix. So I'm going to put that in my green tray. Seed starting mix is sterile. It doesn't have any bad things that can get into your um, into your growing seedlings. So it's really high quality and it's very loose and lofty. And you want that because you want your the roots from your brand new seeds to be able to go right through that soil instead of a big, thick, heavy soil. So that's step one. Step two that I learned from Laura on Garden Answer, and I had great success pre-moistening my soil before I bother putting that soil in the trays, I'm going to mix some water in and wet it because of course it comes dry. Get your hands in there. That's what soap and water is for. And so what I learned from Laura is how are you going to know when it's wet enough but not too wet? She said mix it really well and then you want to pick up a handful and if it stays together, but doesn't drip water, then you know it's moist enough. And so it holds together and yet there's not water dripping. So that looks pretty good. Move that over to the side. Okay. And so the next step is to fill my seed trays. And as I mentioned earlier, I've got the Growies self-watering uh, system that I like to use. These trays are super heavy duty. They work amazingly well. And I'm just going to fill my trays. And so I want to make sure there's no air pockets whenever possible, so I'm gonna gently Pat down, but not too hard. I don't want to push too hard. I just want to gently pat down with my fingers to make sure there's no air pockets. And now I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more on the top. And level it off.
So now it's time to put the seeds in the seed trays and I'm going to uh, go ahead and put two seeds in each cell so that if one doesn't germinate, I'm good to go. If they both germinate, I can pull out the weakest one or use it and repot it in some fashion. And the seed packet from Johnny says that these uh, seeds need to be buried a half to one inch deep. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to use my trusty chopstick. Comes in really handy for a lot of things in gardening uh, in my greenhouse. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bigger end and I'm going to go ahead and push down about an inch in each corner. And that's where I'm going to place my seeds. Now, the trailing variety, I'm going to plant in that one. So here we go. So as I mentioned, I've already soaked the seeds. So I'll put one in each hole that I've created. on top. And then last but not least, I am going to top dress this whole tray with vermiculite. And so I'm just going to sprinkle this over the top. And I do this on all of my seeds that I start in the greenhouse this way. Couple of reasons. Number one, the next step is I'm going to mist the top of this and that vermiculite will hold on to some of the moisture for my seeds but also it actually helps prevent fungus uh, from growing on the top of the soil in your seed trays so you know i'm a little ocd so here we go i'm gonna see the divisions by doing that. You don't have to do that. That's just me. So there you go. Now they're in the seed tray. They were moist to begin with. I placed them in there. I put vermiculite over the top. I misted them in and now we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, a couple more things we need to accomplish to get these ready to germinate. So I've got my bottom to my seed starting kit. Later I'll fill this with water after they germinate and get a few sets of leaves. But for now, since this is already moist soil, I'm just going to set it inside and then very important, putting your dome on. You need to put the dome on top. Let me make sure I have plenty of room. These, these, uh, garden um, tags are a little too tall. I might have to cut those, but you want to put the dome over to keep the humidity inside. That will help things stay moist. You don't want your seedlings to dry out, but you also don't want them to drown. So here we go. The last thing I need to do for my nasturtium seeds is I need to put them on the grow mat. And my grow mat is a heated mat. It gets to about 60 degrees, and that will help them germinate a little quicker. I've got my grow light here. I wouldn't have to have that on necessarily, but it's been so uh, cloudy outside. So I'm gonna stick them on my grow mat, heated, 
And then once the majority of the seeds germinate and I see some leaves come up, a couple of sets of leaves, I will remove the dome and then I'll show you in another video how I'll water them in and they will continue to keep moist. You can see. So here I am in my greenhouse and I am ready to transplant these nestor sims into either a bigger pot or directly into my raised bed where I grow my herbs. And I just wanted to show you my success rate with sowing these seeds. I uh, showed you in a former video how I, how I actually planted them by soaking the seeds for a few hours. Uh, that helps break down their hard outer coating and um, makes them easier to germinate. So I have a 12 uh, cell seed tray here and I sowed two seeds. If I can get in here really close, you can see on this one, in each cell, some cells I got nothing, but a lot of cells, they both came up. So out of this 12 uh, cell tray, I got 16 viable plants. So my next step will be transferring these into either pots or into my raised bed little herb box out here in the greenhouse. And so I have chosen to sow several of them in this antique pot that I found actually on a recent journey just a few days ago. So I thought, oh, this is a nice big pot. So I think I'll put several of the plants in there. And if we come over here, here's my little herb box. It's a two foot by four foot long elevated. You've seen this before in my greenhouse. And I'm going to put some of these transplants and put them probably in this section because I grew two kinds of nasturtiums, the Alaska series and an Alaska trailing variety. And so I'm hoping if I put them in the front end of my herb box, they will grow up and trail over the sides. And I think that might be really pretty. So that's my plan. So it's time to get to it. my antique clay pot to hold some of these beautiful nasturtiums and I've already gone ahead and popped in two of their regular nasturtiums sort of here in the center and then I'm going to choose from this row of seedlings and I'm going to choose these because these are the ones that trail so they come up and then they trail over so I'm going to put four of those sort of towards the edges and hoping they'll be beautiful when they grow and trail uh, down the sides of the pot. So again, I'm going to use my seed starting tongs. These um, I purchased at Gardener Supply online. They actually fit the growy seed starting trays perfectly. And so here's how I use them. You simply put the tongs on the edges of each of the cells. You press all the way down gently a gentle squeeze carefully and pull up and oh my goodness look what you have you have these two seedlings and look at those beautiful healthy roots so it's definitely time to transplant these to a bigger or area a bigger pot or their permanent home which i'm hoping is going to be in this clay pot so i'm going to gently tease these apart just like so, and I'm gonna go ahead and get these potted up.
I'll find it's a it a home here in the greenhouse, and I am excited about this bursting forth with beautiful nasturtiums that I can use uh, just to enjoy the beauty. But I actually harvest the flowers that they produce. Um, and they're edible. So I love to use the flowers in a lot of dishes. I love to cook as well as garden. And so uh, we have friends over a lot and they're always delighted when I bring them a plate of food and it's got some beautiful little nasturtium flowers. The other thing I'll say about nasturtiums is they don't like a lot of fertilizer, actually. They're a lot like herbs. They, uh, the yuckier the soil, <laughs> sort of the better uh, in terms of they don't like a lot of nitrogen, a lot of fertilizer, because if you do that, what ends up happening is they produce a bunch of green leaves and foliage, but not many flowers. So anyhow, so they're pretty much no fuss. So here we are with our first pot of nasturtium starts. I'm excited. So here's what I accomplished today in the greenhouse. You followed me along as I transplanted my nasturtium seedlings. I chose to put the trailing variety and standards, uh, the Alaska series, in this big pot, this big antique terracotta pot I recently picked up. So there we go. And then let me turn around here and show you something I didn't show on camera earlier, but I had about four of these seedlings left over, so I thought, get out my trusty little clay pots and go ahead and pop them in one of those so they can sit there and hopefully bloom in three or four weeks and look beautiful with the little dragon wing begonias behind them. And of course, one of my little gnomes. I'm sure you've noticed I'm a big gnome fan. You know, you get to that age, I guess, right? And you start loving that stuff. At least that's me. Last but not least, you saw me pop in the trailing variety that I grew from seed into my raised bed that I keep all of my herbs in in the greenhouse year round. The hope is that they will grow up and spill over the edges of that beautiful raised bed and add not only beauty, but it will add an opportunity for me to use them as I like to when I cook in the house and serve my friends some dishes that get really pretty when I add those beautiful edible flowers. So just to wrap some things up from today's video about nasturtiums, you got to see how I like to plant nasturtiums, how I like to sow them. You learn how I like to soak that seed because it's a really gnarly, hard outer coating on the seed. Um, and what I didn't mention before is that they only took five days to germinate. So soaking that seed, nicking that seed like I like to do, really can speed up germination. So about five days from when I sow them to when those leaves popped out and they germinated. And then it was about three weeks after that, they got to be at least four inches tall, all the little plants. And that's at the point you saw in the video where I just transplanted them from the seed starting trays into some pots in the greenhouse and into my raised bed box in the greenhouse. So I'm pretty pleased with how they've come along. According to what I've read on the seed packets that I shared earlier and online, at this point, they ought to take probably another three weeks or so before they start flowering. So I will bring you back into the greenhouse and upload another video once those nasturtium plants start to flower and bring some beauty into 
uh, my pots and into that little raised bed box that I have set up in my greenhouse. So as always, I want to thank you all so much for coming along with me as I explored nasturtiums and growing them from seed. I really appreciate your support. If you enjoyed the video, you found it helpful or inspiring, I'd appreciate it if you'd click the like button as well as, you know, that subscribe button. That really helps my channel get out there and so that more people can see it, but also it helps you know uh, when I'm going to be posting new videos. So again, thank you all so much for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed today's video on nasturtiums and as always, happy gardening!